Continuing this painting that I started with glazing, you can see part one. Um, we have established the uh, sea and a rough skyline with a, just a hint of how the sky is going to be. This is going to be a sunset sky. So what I want to do now is to establish some of the back structures and for that I'm going to create this light blue mixture and I'm going to add a little bit of orange to it. So orange and blue create a sort of a dirty, this is a dirty gray color. I want something that's nondescript, but the blue adds value to the back of the structures because blue makes things feel that they are farther away. So this might actually be a little bit too light. So I am adding just a little bit of the alizarin crimson. My colors are Indian yellow, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue. They are transparent colors and those are my base colors. And for this particular painting, I'm also using viridian green, which is opaque. I may not use cadmium red medium or cadmium yellow medium in this painting because it's a softer color palette. So I may not use these two. They, these three are opaque and I only use them for accent colors. And I also have titanium white. So with a little bit of that alizarin crimson to the gray that I had uh, created, I am just making a sort of a gray color. It's violet, but because I used orange, it has the three colors. So with this particular color, what I want to do is just to establish some lines. So go ahead with me and it's, I don't want to define the structures of the buildings in the back with a lot of precision, but just by making some marks and changing the colors of these marks and also the width and the direction of these marks, it will create a sensation that there's some buildings in there. Now, the buildings that I want to more, you know, define with a little bit more precision are around the church, which uh, to me is going to be like the focal point. So the buildings around here are gonna have a little bit more def definition. So with this same color, we go now to this end where I can see, I can establish sort of a slanted building, like that's the side of, of a building, and then something in the back. Again, not, uh, not following the architectural description with any sort of definition, but just to make sure that we see there's a skyline in the back. So that's for the blue, lighter blue color. What I'm going to do now is add a bit more of the darker colors to that same blue, which are my alizarin crimson and my ultramarine blue. So when I add those two to the sort of dirty color, I make, make this violet a bit darker. Not too much darker because in the back, the changes in colors should not be very dramatic and there are still buildings in the back. So just, you know, you can just place wherever you place it. Just don't, don't be too precise in terms of uh, very geometric or symmetric, I should say, because buildings, although sometimes they do follow some symmetry, um, it's better just to have different shades. And just by adding some darker colors, we are giving the impression that those particular uh, structures are in the shade. And then we're gonna bring a little bit more of brighter colors. So by the church, this particular building in front of the church, I had mentioned in the previous uh, video, if you haven't seen it, feel free to go to my YouTube channel and see part one. It had um, a roof. It's, it's a very characteristic roof. So I just want to do it. You don't need to do it. If you're just making up a structure. I think that vertical steeple of the church adds visual interest. 
So this particular building, we're gonna make it a bit smaller with the areas around, but it had like a, the slanted roof and then like a square on the, on the top. So I'm sure somebody knows the exact architectural definition of that structure. Okay, now we're gonna make that a little bit smaller with painting around, but that's going to bring the steeple, which is gonna be in the light, a bit more in view, which is what I wanted. And then we're gonna put some shadowed areas around this place. This is gonna be in the, in the shade and the lighter areas are gonna be hit by the sunlight. And that gives the impression or a better impression of structure and volume. So this one here, again, the same violet that you have. If you are mixing the colors with me, it's the um, alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue with a tiny bit of the Indian yellow. If you are not mixing colors and you have a lot of variety, you can just choose the ones that you think look similar to the palette that I'm using. Now, because my paints are still wet, there's a little bit of a mixing, which is fine. So not all of the dark violet looks exactly the same. And, and that's, that's good. Sometimes what I say is that my brush and, and my own paintings are telling me what to do and how to do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue using this same purple, but it became lighter when I used it on top of that lighter area. So that's fine because right in front of this building, I can see there's a lighter area and I don't want to, I, I'm seeing a very small image of my photograph, of my original photograph, and that's on purpose. I don't want to get lost in details on the structure, structural buildings and architecture. I just want to give the impression that there are some buildings in there. And this particular line, it's crooked. I think you probably already noticed that the C should actually be flat. So we are going to work a little bit on that too, fixing that line so it's horizontal. But I want to work uh, a bit more on the back end before we move on. Now I am going to add some pinkish color to some of the front structures or the structures in the front. Some of them were getting more light than others. So there's, these are like warehouses. And one of the things that I do want to do, I can put my hand here, it's acrylic and it's already dry. It's to make sure that this, even though I don't want to do precision in architecture, um, it should actually have more straight lines unless I'm painting a tree within those buildings, which I don't see much of the vegetation there. So if I were painting some trees, then it would be a different thing. But for architecture, you do want to have some straight lines. This one here, even though I painted it in, in all purple, it had some areas of a slanted roof and then a little bit more straight. And then there seems to be another area here with a back building. So I'm just, if you just put pieces of paint that give the impression of the square buildings, that should work fine. And I'm going over the purple with this lighter color. And that actually helps me to define a bit less these buildings. I also want to come on top of here because these were too defined. And I'm just want, I just want to make sure that even though we have that dark there in the, in the edges of your painting, you normally don't want to have too much definition or too much detail. You don't want people to actually start saying, you know, where, where are you as a painter telling the viewer to, to go, to pay attention? And some, sometimes you want to do these detailed paintings where you want 
people to see everything in the painting and go, you know, millimeter by millimeter, that, that's fine. I want them to see the whole and pay attention to the center of this painting. If that, if all goes well, that will probably <laughs> work fine. In the, in the back buildings, I'm gonna use more of blue hinges or t tints or impression of blue because it's farther away. And this line, it's definitely, so if you see how far from the top is the edge of the C there, and we just move it down, it's a little bit higher on this end, just a little bit. So I just want to make sure that we have a, a straight line because even if it's a little bit, it doesn't look very good. When you, when you see the painting, you say, oh, something's wrong there. So let's see if, if I did it correctly or if I made a mistake. So it does, it does seem to be a little bit straighter now. So, so that's good. Then I'm gonna soften also that edge and there's gonna be snow on top, but at least we have the base. So because I'm gonna move to a bluer tint, I am just going for the first time in this installment to take away the excess paint that's in the brush. And then off camera, I am going to put it in clean water. So I'm just pushing it into the bucket of water to release as much paint as I can. I don't need to really have super, super clean because I'm gonna come back with a turquoise color for the back. It's gonna be, um, turquoise will be with ultramarine blue, viridian green, and a lot of white. So I don't really, because I'm using still the, the blue, I don't need to be completely cleaning it. So it doesn't really matter that there's still some paint in there. And some paint gets in the metallic, the ferrule it's called, but some of it also gets into the hair. And that could create a little bit of a problem when you want to have a very good chiseled edge. If you have paint that dries, this is acrylic, it's plastic, and if it does dry in the near the ferrule, then you cannot get a very good chiseled edge when you are painting. So this, this will do for now, but of course I need to um, wash this very, very carefully when we're done. This is what I talked to you about. It's the ultramarine blue, viridian green, and a lot of white. That's going to be sort of, let's see how light, yes. This is going to look very light eventually, I hope. And this is the church, um, I think it's the bell tower. And then there is a bright area here. The brightest thing is gonna be the sky, and some reflections on the water. And even though I'm saying this is the bright area here, you probably are saying, well, what's she talking about? It doesn't really look very bright. Well, that's because um, everything is relative. And so far, this back end, it's still very much dull. And that's what you want for, for the back buildings. Things that are farther away, they're less defined and the colors are, are less differentiated. So I'm just adding this greenish color in some areas. Now there was, there's another building here, I don't know what it is, but it's a very interesting, another building that has like a small turret. And then there's a very bright building by the back of this warehouse. And this turret, it will be catching light same as this one here and there's a place in here where it's going to be also catching the light all those elements that i'm talking to you about i hope you don't get too desperate by not seeing a photograph of what i'm painting but it it really doesn't look 
exactly like the photograph, which is the, the idea is just to have square or rectangular um, images that start looking like, like you do have some sort of a structure there. Without cleaning the brush, I'm gonna go back to that violet that we had. So now you see the brushes having the green and the purple close by. And that's just to fill out some areas in here that need to be a little darker than the green, but lighter. And that's the way that I achieved that sort of also purple, but lighter purple that we had before, that pushes things to the back, especially the back of this one. And uh, I think this is too dark. And by having it with a dirty green, it brings a bit of harmony. So you can just go over your previous uh, structures and just make sure that like, you know, I said here, uh, it would be more straight. And you can see what happens with these hairs because I didn't clean correctly or completely. Um, now they're sprayed or splayed and they're giving some brush strokes. That's fine. You can work with the brush strokes uh, to your advantage. Okay, so that's a darker building than the ones in the back, but uh, by giving it a little bit of this hint of the green, it's now looking, I hope you see it, more like a cityscape. So without cleaning the brush yet, I am going to use the dark color, which is ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson. And I do need to try to make as chiseled edge as possible because the church does have a, well, I suppose on top of the bell tower, I am supposing there's a cross, although I only see a tall end. And it, it was a bit dark, so I think it's gonna look okay. There's uh, some elements here that are dark. So this is looking more blue than red, which is fine, or you can just add some of the red. And there were some elements not very well defined. I, I don't want to go and define all these areas, but in, in some places I do want to bring the attention of some changes in these buildings. And this is pretty much, uh, I think, all that I want to really work on. I think I just banged on the phone, apologies. Now, closer to the area of the, where the land meets the sea, with the same colors that I had, I just went around because there's a dark area and then we're gonna put place some uh, pieces of color that's going to be resembling, hopefully, snow. So let me try to see if I can clean this brush completely. Um, not that I need to clean it because my next color is going to be working on the sea. So technically I could use the same brush, but I am getting very spoiled with this size of a brush. I like to use the larger brush as possible. And this is a large brush by, for a nine by 12 painting. But how about this one? This one is a large brush. Of course, compared to the other one that I have, it's gonna cover a lot more in uh, less time and what I want is really more gentle in this back end and it's going to have a hint of that blue but also of the viridian green and it needs to be dark so I am off camera I am mixing viridian green with ultramarine blue And 
I think I need a bit more of the viridian green. You can use viridian green or you can also use phthalo cyan in green. That's also called phthalo green, a bit more blue. And, um, or phthalo cyan in blue, both will work. So you can see I don't have all the colors well mixed, but you can see more or less, I was looking for a greenish color that's not too much different in terms of darkness to what I had before. And with that, I'm just going to go and put it on top of my painting. And then I'm just going to turn it around. And because you saw that I had some of those colors not very well mixed, that's the impression that I am getting on, on the water. In the back, it should be a softer, gentler waterline. Now I am going to add to that mix a little bit more of the red and blue. So I get like a, because I have now red, blue and viridian green, I get like a dark, there you go. It's less of a blue. It has that very small hint of purple. You may not necessarily uh, distinguish it, but it is, it is actually perceived. Oh, I just need to make sure that line is straight. And as I try to straighten it, I am getting... Okay, so at the back end, you can see that there's... I'm starting to get different colors in layers. And now, for some reason, I just... There's no logic behind it. It's just visually, I think I want to have a bit more of that purple red uh, around some of these areas. And I am making this now less, less waves than I had before, uh, but we're gonna keep a lot of the other waves that we had in the front. So that's, I hope you noticed why I wanted to use the large brush um, with acrylics. They dry fast and they dry darker. That's another thing you need to consider. So with the acrylics, if you, want to paint an area that's more gentle in terms of less brush strokes, I, I find easier and better to use a larger brush rather than use, using a smaller brush because by the time you try to make the nice gentle change or, or brushing it, um, it dries and then you cannot apply the paint with the same effect. So I'm just making it a little bit darker in this area because at the edges of the painting, I usually like to have it a bit darker. So um, with that principle in mind, I'm just gently, and probably this would be better if I just painted the other way, but I'm not very good at at changing the direction of my brush strokes. I guess I should learn, okay. So now I hope you're seeing uh, a better idea. It's a winter scene and we're gonna add now, I think it's going to be, let's work on the rose colors and the pink colors of the sky and the reflections on the water, reflections from the sky. There were no reflections in the water from the back end. What, what I think I'm going to do at the very, very end is the snow that was peaking on some of these areas, especially on the, on the waterfront. I think those are warehouse, some of them have piers, and the snow was just accumulating in some of those areas. So what I'm doing off camera while I'm talking is cleaning my brush. Uh, again, I want to make sure the brush is not um, going to have at least not a lot of paint until I finish this session and I wash it thoroughly with soapy water. I just want to make sure with water that I remove most of the paint. So in the area closer to the horizon, I'm going to go back to either 
the brush I was using before or even a, a little smaller one. So these are, all of the brushes I'm using are Royal Langnickel. Um, actually all three are Royal Langnickel. And these two are the ones that we call angle brushes. And the other one is a flat. And these are sizes six and nine. I don't know why I'm going on details of this because it's all in the description below. So you can find it there. So I am going to there now doing something weird. I'm going to use just the straight Indian yellow. Let's see if that works. If not, what I need to do is just to add white. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to add white, but see, this is a beautiful, beautiful transparent color. And actually, I think it may work. If you don't have a transparent color, if you are using something like a cadmium yellow because you don't have Indian green, or you are using um, yellow ochre that could be not transparent, that's, that's the thing you need to, to see. If it's not transparent and you are not getting sort of the same effect I am getting, which is a glowing effect. That's, that's what I like about these transparent colors. If you don't get this glowing effect, go ahead and mix a little bit of white to your yellow, which is what I'm going to be doing right now. So I'm going to be adding some white to the yellow because I'm going to be working a bit more on stressing that light that was hitting the church steeple. And then with the color of this sky, I am just re-establishing a bit of these rooftops that I had painted. I'm going to go a bit more with the yellow and a tiny bit of the alizarin crimson here. So you can see this is more of now like orange color, orangey color. And I don't even know if I'm making up words that don't really exist in English, like saying orangey or peachy. And peachy is a, an English word. Okay. Um, so now I'm just establishing the skyline with this sort of a salmon color, a lizard crimson, Indian yellow, and white. And... The more Indian yellow, I mean, the less white you use, the brighter it becomes. Um, there's the, the white actually makes things a bit dull. So be careful when you want to do a stress in or a focus in a particular image and you want to make it lighter. Sometimes white does not really help you with that. Now I am going to use a bit more of the alizarin crimson rosy color in this end and it there's a little bit less of the yellow so this is rosy a and crimson and tiny bit of the yellow this is not completely without yellow and as you can see I can blend because um, and I am I'm not using any medium in, in this particular installment. I did use glazing medium at the beginning and I don't, I didn't like it. So I don't think I'm going to be doing that in future uh, videos, but um, I'm working with what I did and the best that I can do. Okay, so you can see how nice that Indian yellow is. Now I'm coming with the same color on this end. It's probably a bit rosier. Yeah, you can see that's a lizard and crimson and white only, but my brush already has the Indian yellow mix. So I'm sort of mixing it on the canvas and with my brush. And the horizon line is always, always the one that it's, lighter in color. So the horizon is less strong and lighter than the other. I left a little space in here 
Uh, what I'm going to do is use the Indian yellow, let's see if it works, alone, and just brush it so I can sort of blend it with that rose color. And small strokes allow me and will allow you to blend better than big strokes. With big strokes, you just bring one color to the other and sometimes that's not a good way of blending. Okay, so that transparency here is not working very well. So what I'm going to do is a little bit of the Indian yellow with white. White is an opaque color. White is a color. And white uh, is going to allow me to cover some of these areas better than before. And I may have to come back with other uh, layers. Okay. That was the building that has like a round turret. And, you know, so, sometimes it's nice to place some sort of skyline that uh, is going to be different than the normal. It's like, you know, this one here, and I did mention I wanted to make it smaller. So I'm just using the Indian yellow with white to make it opaque and go around this with a bit more precision. So I can actually make it a bit smaller than I had originally painted it. Sometimes it's good to get the right size at the beginning, but if you don't, you, you don't need to worry. You can always either, you know, leave it big. That's fine. Nobody is going to tell you that it wasn't as big. <laughs> and there's going to be some clouds on the sky. So why not? we can start insinuating some areas where the sky might be um, broken by, by some of these clouds. Now the sky is what we are painting in yellow. And we will be making those clouds in a very soft and gentle purple color. Okay. So I hope that you realize the color of the steeple now, it's shining a bit more because we are painting the bright color around it. And I think I want to just establish a bit more of that light color. It could be that my, my acrylics are drying and because they dry darker, um, they look darker, or it could be because I started from the beginning, maybe a bit too light. And I think this is, yeah, we, we need to just make sure that we don't go as bright as we are at the edges of the, of the canvas of your composition. Of course, you can, you know, compositional wise, if you like a composition and you want to go uh, with different rules, that, that's fine. Like, like I say, you know, in painting, there are some techniques that help a lot. I mean, there are a lot of techniques that help a lot, but there are rules that you don't need to necessarily follow if that's not your liking. It's your painting and, um, you know, compositionally, you could have placed exactly the steeple in the middle. Why not? I mean, we are told that that's not convenient or a good thing to do, but why not? We're going to turn now into a blue sky that was very dusky blue. And so I am cleaning the brush because orange and blue make gray. We will need that for some of the clouds, but we don't need that for the blue sky. Now, because it was snowing, the snowy skies are not really that, that clean. So I am using some of the colors that I had used here. And maybe, just adding white. The, the sky, even if it's a cloudy day, the sky should actually always be the lightest thing in the painting. This might be just a smidge too light, but I like that 
color, that greenish turquoise color. And it's the same that I had created here. So if you have created it or if you took it out of the tube, uh, use the same or a similar one. And it will be sort of getting lost in the pink, hopefully. Uh, and I probably will have to establish a bit more of the pink. So darker is at the top and lighter as it comes down. And that's usually horizon, it gets lighter. The reason why we all like to tell you, and I've seen a lot of different YouTube um, tutorials, if you're painting these kind of dramatic skies and you have the yellow horizon line, it's very good to transition from the orange to a pink because the transition between pink and blue, it's very soft, very nice. And the transition between pink and orange is also very nice. But if you have side by side the blue and the orange, then, you know, with the green, it uh, turns with a uh, yellow, sorry, it turned green. And the transition is better if you actually have blue to pinkish and then pinkish to orange. So you probably guessed, if you haven't, what I'm going to do now is get that pink color a little lighter than I had it before and just establish some more of this pink for the transition. When you do make your colors, mix them. I am mixing them off camera and I'm pretty quick at mixing colors. But if you're not as quick at mixing colors, um, I just recommend that you, when you have, start mixing them, just mix a big pile. I mean, big pile. I, I don't want to <laughs> define in milliliters how big is big. <laughs> it's just, you know, big enough so that you don't have to continually come back with creating more colors, but if you, I actually enjoy creating them. And as you can see, I am starting to mix a bit more of the pink where, where I had more of the blue. And there's gonna be a bit more pinkish color here. So yeah, the sky is transitioning. And now what I'm going to do is just slightly brush clean the brush um, I want to just make sure that it's pretty pretty clean and just come back with the yellow which is a transparent color and on top of that pink hopefully I get the effect that I want which is a nice transition of that pink into the yellow again if you don't have a transparent color don't worry you can also try to blend by using your yellow as long as your pink is still wet it should it should create a good impression now i just realized that around the the tall uh, spike on the church steeple it's too transparent and i think i wanted it to be more of the bright yellow so this is the one that has white so when I say it was too transparent it was because that yellow was just straight transparent yellow that I have and if I want to make it opaque I can use either cadmium which is opaque and I can mix the cadmium with the yellow uh, Indian yellow, or as you see here with white. Okay, so I like the way that this sky is now softening and showing. And now I think we can go with the same dirty brush and some of the purples that I had here. Let's see if this is gonna work. We are going to create some, some clouds. I think it needs a little bit more purple. So I still have these mixes 
on the palette but if you don't have enough of your colors is the ultramarine blue and the violet i'm sorry the uh, alizarin crimson and i didn't actually clean very much the i didn't actually clean that much uh, from the yellow so there were some you know the snow clouds that you see these are soft clouds i don't want to make a very dramatic sky but they were definitely interestingly some of these are coming right behind that church steeple so we'll just make some some notes here and there were some more clouds around here and i'm using exactly the same color for for the clouds now again same same or similar color we had we add some some more shapes here for the for the clouds that could be um interesting now in terms of clouds um Okay, viridian green get out <laughs> okay so now in terms of the clouds they really the shapes are wispy in this case because I don't know if you've seen skies when the snow is coming but those those snow clouds I love them um, they're very different from the typical summer cloudy skies so just pay attention to to your clouds and these are less sort of less defined um sometimes they're actually loaded with what you can see you know is the snow uh, in this case the snow had passed when i took this picture so there were still some remnants so what i did is establish a little bit of a, of a darker color and this is going to come in, in the bottom of these clouds you can see how i am just adding this shape of clouds at the bottom of from the bottom of my brush and some of these areas in here so yeah i just don't want to make to make um, a lot of clouds i think i'm gonna soften that a little bit how am i gonna do it so uh what we're going to do is just clean the brush and let's just try without doing anything else just on top of that because these clouds are farther so just going on on top of what I painted and just make it less less defined less strong okay so these wispy clouds are okay I like the way they, they are looking and you can see I'm sort of lifting some of the color and getting some areas where it works but in some areas it doesn't so i'm just using some of the um, colors i had for these buildings here to make these clouds probably um, less dark than i had them but um, not transparent by lifting the colors i think they just looked weird okay so I have to confess, I don't like what I did by using the glazing medium at the beginning. So if you see the start of this painting, uh, you'll see what I mean by that. Um, you can try it, definitely. If you are painting with me, uh, then you probably did it if you painted with me on the first installment. I don't know if you are liking the feeling of the canvas, but I... I don't really like it. So I'm just telling you uh, it's good to try, um, but it's not gliding the way that I'm used to gliding. Is it working? I think, I think we can open up a little bit of the sky. Let's, let's move to a thing that I want to do now on the area of the sea closer to us and then we're going to establish more pinkish colors in the sky and i think we're going to make this smaller so alizarin crimson is a transparent color and i'm just going to dare putting it 
a little bit in here, transparent, okay? So wipe it a little bit because it was a lot. And I just want to get a hint of that pinkish color that was reflecting on this beautiful day. And it was reflecting from the, from the sky. So I think I wiped a little bit too much. So just add a little more, it's transparent. Again, if you're using cadmium red, that's not transparent. So you may not be getting the same effect that I am getting. And that's one reason I already wanted to try this uh, because I did see those sort of pinkish reflections on the water. So I wanted to make sure that I had more of the light white canvas, um, not completely white, but showing in the front because that's what I wanted to make sure that I had some hint of the pinkish color that was reflecting. And now that I have that pink color, I'm just going to establish more of the alizarin crimson and white pink. And I'm just going to go back and make sure that we have a nicer pinkish. This was very pink sky. And it was just basically, I'm just, as you can see, brushing it on top of the blue that we had. And if it doesn't go very well, I can add, actually, I think I'm going to add a little bit more of the white. I think I added too much. So, um, reestablishing a little bit more of that aliz nice alizarin crimson. Yes. And for the for the sky and again as as i am brushing it i'm not completely getting rid of the yellow but um i'm adding just a tiny bit of water here to get this blue peeking through but it's mainly mainly very red and the blue sky was really not very prominent so it's, this is just water with the same brush that I had so that I can just move the paint and get some of the blue and, and, and the pink sort of together, but definitely more of a pink sky. And I don't like that too much. So let's see if I can establish a bit more of that pink with more white and just try to make this more, you know, softer, gentler. In terms of that particular, I mean, we could see maybe there's a hint of that cloud, but I think it was, I mean, I didn't like it, even though it's sort of I mean, clouds can be big or small, but I just didn't like it the way that it was looking with this particular composition. And now uh, these are a bit too dark. So what I am going to do is just use some of the same color I had for the back and I didn't cl clean my brush. So it should still have some, oops, I think that was too much, but may may actually work fine to have some of this sky this way yeah yeah okay yeah I like it <laughs> maybe you're saying I don't like it but yeah I think it worked without me planning for it it just worked all right so what else do I need to do I think I did mention to you that we need to establish some hint of snow now snow is not gonna be completely white so I haven't cleaned the brush this is sort of a dirty white and there was definitely more snow accumulated in this area and it was like um, it's probably a bit too bright too light but I think it may work and in some of these rooftops I could see some of the snow definitely more like here probably going to, to the banks of the river and some on, on these rooftops. I guess they don't 
shovel all shovel all the snow on these straight rooftops and then there were some here some more snow here but definitely the more light on the snow was in this area there was almost nothing on the on the back and this here i just need to make sure that straight line that i mean the snow can go on the water but i think i went too far so this is just water you can see how <laughs> you you can probably identify now or see now why i keep saying about the opaque colors really they cover the transparent colors and that's when you don't want that like here i'm gonna have to come back and try to erase this little glitch here of snow shouldn't be there okay so a little bit more snow here and now what i'm going to do is just uh, uh, the same sort of uh, white and yellow more white than yellow but it's not completely white for some areas in the snow where they were catching that brilliant reflection of, of light and actually the sunset is happening behind me and what we are seeing there is the reflection of the sun on the sky that's what we see and that's why the light's coming hitting this end so then there was some areas of, of bright catching the bright light on some of these buildings and rooftops so it's just hints hints of them and it, this is not completely white as I mentioned to you, this is actually um, white with a tiny bit of the yellow uh, to sort of show where the light is, is hitting that snow. Okay. And I believe that one more thing we can do, let's see if this works, is with the sort of orangey and pinkish color. I'm just going to have a reflections on some of these waves. They are catching this light. So it's the pinkish color that I used. And it's just a few, a few of them, a few strokes. Sometimes um, when, when you do just a few of these reflections, don't, don't do too much. And what I have found is that where my previous stroke deposited a dark, it's very nice to have a, a light color by the dark color. Okay, I think that now we have a nicer painting. I hope you liked it. This is again the um, Boston um, Harbor and that's East Boston. And the only thing that I did mention I was gonna do, I still have my dark, is just make sure that I sort of try to cover that mistake in there. Of course now it's not exactly the same color but that, that's fine i mean the water has different feelings to it i hope you enjoyed this painting uh it is um it's it's a view that it's always been something that i really like and i like the idea of having some um, rosy pinkish color on the water reflecting from that sky and maybe just a little bit more of the transparent uh, red on on this area of the of the water too and you can see it's just the, the the red and it's just water i'm not using any medium just to make it a little bit more striking and i'm just tempted uh, probably you're saying stop to use a little bit of the orange in some of these uh, waves just a little bit brighter 
and normally um, I mean you can see where these are I mean if you're painting from a photograph or from real life you can actually follow where they are um, if you are doing like I am doing which I'm taking a lot of um, what they say artistic license uh, I just want to uh, bring some of the attention to that area of the of the church now I think I think I did too much so sometimes we can get carried away with these strong colors and this is just the blue that I had before so I didn't actually make any specific uh, new combination we will call it a day I hope you like this sunset by the Bay of Boston uh, looking over the East Boston area. Thank you very much and please join me in other of my uh, YouTube videos and if you haven't, subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.